Wax Protocol, Gaming, NFTs, and Blockchain. Sound like it could have investment potential? We'll be discussing it on today's podcast. Welcome to the Crypto Masters Podcast, helping the general public master an understanding of crypto assets. My name is Brian. And my name is Ross. And we are the The Crypto Crypto Masters. Masters. All right, Ross, the topic of today's episode is WAX Protocol, which, as I said, involves gaming, NFTs, could be a major growth area for crypto assets. Quick reminder, our goal here on the Crypto Masters is to provide information about crypto assets and let you, the public, decide if it's something you may want to invest in and do further research on your own. Yeah, Brian, we provide you know information about all sorts of different kind of cryptos to allow you, the listeners, to make your own investment and financial decisions. And of course... This is not not financial advice. Not yeah. I was like, we're said. gonna say that. Same time. <laughs> I thought you were just trying to steal my thunder. <laughs> no, I was gonna. I was like, it. I will let them watch you, Brian. All right. <laughs> See the monster that you are. But yeah, <laughs> the pro the uh, the wax project is associated with gaming. So we are back in my wheelhouse. And you guess what, Brian? I'm psyched. Yeah, I'm psyched. That is the gaming is your wheelhouse. So let's talk about it. Wax protocol. Wax is an abbreviation for Worldwide Asset Exchange. Kind of interesting. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's a decentralized blockchain platform. It launched in 2017. It's designed as an open, transparent, and immutable marketplace to exchange to exchange virtual goods tokenized as NFTs. Immutable, so no mutants. <laughs> Can't be changed. All right. <laughs> These items range uh, from everything from items used in a video game, collectible memorabilia, or rare trading cards, and more. So Wax was developed and founded by the founders of OP Skins, which was the leading marketplace for online video game assets. Yep. The Wax platform allows for both current and future marketplaces to interact with the use of the native Wax token. So Wax has its own blockchain. And Ross, tell us a little bit more about what the Wax protocol does. For sure, Brian. Yeah, the Wax protocol is designed to make e-commerce transactions faster, easier, And safer. That's a good trifecta there for all participants. But yeah, the WAX uh, blockchain uses delegated proof of stake as its consensus mechanism. And there are only 21 WAX guilds from which, you know, block producers are selected. And like other, you know, delegated proof of stake projects, it's, you know, can be criticized for lack of decentralization. But, you know, we've seen that before. That's kind of the trade-off, you know, delegated proof of stake is typically a lot faster than... Uh, proof of work. Yeah, that's uh, the trade-off. I think we EOS and, and there, we've talked about a couple others that have used the DPOS. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it so. works well for speed, but it is you know can be criticized for hey only twenty one. You know. It's yeah. Not, exactly. Not that, not that decentralized. Oh. Um, so yeah, Wax has uh, created a suite of blockchain-based tools uh, upon which DApps, marketplaces, and native. Uh, non-fungible tokens, NFTs, are built. Uh, you might have heard of those. I don't know. It might <laughs> a little bit of a hot topic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, these tools are included services to support e-commerce operations. And some of these uh, operations include uh, Wax Cloud Wallet, which is you know, very user-friendly. Uh, we'll get into, I think, in a little bit. Yep. Um, a native RNG, which is a random number generator service. And that's kind of for developers, you know, just, just to kind of highlight something. Um, and show what all they're building kind of under the hood for developers and a developer portal, which I've delved into. The documentation looks good. Um, you know, all things you want to um, really help power a system, you know, give the developer the power and the, the ease to which to develop, uh, you know, dApps and various yep. things. Yep. Um, the resulting technology reported reportedly has very, flas- very fast block times. And it's fearless for customers and leverages voting rewards to incentivize participation in the selection of block producers and proposals. And, you know, Ross, I'm just going to kind of confess, you know, I'd heard of WAX, um, the WAX uh, protocol, um, haven't, haven't bought any. And, but, you know, before we sort of dived into our research for this project, I kind of, I thought of it as like a gaming platform or maybe gaming and NFTs. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, and that is certainly a big part of it, but now it seems like it's at least trying to become more of an e-commerce project, maybe with its focused on gaming. So 
Uh, just throwing my, my two cents in there. Yeah, that. throw in your two cents or two Satoshis. Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> I, I want to talk now about a really cool feature that I think is on the roadmap, um, but it really sort of resonated with me, and, and it may be unique um, on WAX, and it's more fully explained on its website, but it's an interesting use case that c kind of combines um, NFTs with real-world e-commerce. So they call it viral NFTs, and let me let me tell you what this is. So, viral stands for virtual in real life. So V I R L, but they pronounce it viral, which is kind of cool acronym. Ooh, that one hurts my brain, Brian. Can you <laughs> can you explain that a little more? But you know what? Yes, that, actually, that kind of <laughs> describes what it is. So it allow it allows you to own a physical object without taking delivery. So of course, you always want to have the option of taking uh, physical delivery, and you do have it. But it may be something that you may not want or need to take physical delivery of. Okay, so why, why, where would you want this? Let's, let's okay. come up with an example. We talked before about collectibles like sneakers. You know, people collect sneakers. And it's a collectible, not something that they're really going to wear because that would then ruin the value. It's just a collectible, right? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're sneaker heads, right? That's what they call themselves. Um, so... They, they don't actually wear them, but they, they probably have a room or a big closet that's just full of shoeboxes, right? So yeah. instead, if they had a viral NFT, they would have an NFT, you know, uh, with a graphical representation of the sneaker. Yeah. They, can, they could look at it if they wanted, but they don't have to store them. So they would have the virtual NFT, but the actual shoes are still in a warehouse somewhere. So... You know, you think about like an Amazon warehouse, right? It has a bunch of stuff in there that's ready yeah. to ship out. But until it's shipped out, it's in a, it's in the Amazon warehouse. So um, with, with the viral NFTs, you can buy the viral NFT, which is buying the underlying, in this case, pair of shoes. Uh -huh. But you only have the, um, the viral, you, you only have the virtual NFT um, unless you want it. At any yeah. time, you can click like redeem and you'll be sent the actual shoes. But I, I think, you know, and again, going with the shoe example, that's a case where you may never need to have those actual shoes. You, you can just wait for the value to go up, which they do on some of these, you know, Air Jordans. Oh, like yeah. yeah. They, I'm no expert in it. But the value goes up. But instead of you taking the shoes, so having it shipped to you, you store it for a while goes up in value, then you sell it, you know, an online marketplace, and then you have to ship it to the buyer, you would never yeah. have to do that. I mean, that can't, you can kind of see the, the, the cool aspect of this. You don't have the wasted deliveries. I, I could say, all right, these shoes have gone up in value. I'm going to sell them. S somebody buys them from me. All I do is send them my NFT. Now they have yeah. the NFT. They have the option to take physical delivery or not. Maybe they're going to wait even longer. So anyways. Yeah, it's kind of like you can keep your uh, NFT in this virtual warehouse with uh, yeah. air conditioning and, and cooling. Right, and, and not nice the expense. I mean, there's exactly. an inventory yeah. storage expense. And, and exactly. the shipping, yeah. shipping two ways expense that you can avoid. So let me just think, give you another quick example. So as men... And I know, you know, I'm pretty familiar with your wife. And, uh -huh. uh, yeah. you know, maybe we get him jewelry. Oh, for sure. Right. Uh -huh. And it, we're not always great at getting jewelry that they want. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I have. I've, uh, I've struck out a couple times. Right. So, <laughs> so instead, let's say, I don't know, necklace. You, you get her a, uh, a viral NFT uh, necklace. Yeah. Now, if she likes it and, or loves it, that's great. She clicks redeem, boom, they send her the physical. Right. Mm -hmm. If she doesn't like it now, it's not like it was shipped to you. You give it to her. She has to return it. Uh -huh. No, instead she could just sell it. Yeah. Right. I mean, instead of returning, she just sells the virtual uh, NFT and you don't have to do all the shipping back and forth and the returning. So, yeah, it really puts it feels like they put the power back into the user right. or the owner's hand, you know. So, so so let's say what would her other option be? You, you give her this uh, viral NFT of a necklace. And she doesn't like it. But no, if you've given her the actual necklace, maybe now she doesn't want to return it or isn't able to return it. So what does she do? Maybe she sells it on a Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Then yeah. what? Then you got a rando showing up, you know, could be creepy, could be sketchy. I mean, it just <laughs> yeah, avoids all Yeah, Facebook Marketplace, and, yeah. And, and honestly, just thinking this through for me, it's... 
that's the future. I mean, it, it, exactly for, yeah. for a lot, a lot of things, maybe not everything, but um, yeah, that's a real innovation. I like it. Well said, Brian. That, <laughs> very cool. Very cool. And I'd yeah. say another option, you know, if she wants to return it or redeem it for something else um, is just insulting me. It sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> or bringing down my spirits, I'll say. Well, it's not, it's almost <laughs> like you're, you're sort of admitting, Hey, I, hon, I'm giving you a virtual NFT of this necklace. Cause I'm not really sure if you're going to yeah. like it or not. If you don't like it, that's okay. It's real easy for you to get something else or just return it. Yeah. I'm giving you I mean, this or a gift card, you know? So, yeah, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Shop away your yeah. NFTs. Anyways, I thought that was cool. Worthy of discussion. Yeah, and speaking of NX, in, NFTs, Wax is known as the king of NFTs, and part because they have an impressive list of partners, and I'll read off a few here, and that includes uh, Tops, uh, which is Major, Major League Baseball, Capcom, Street Fighter, uh, Funko, Atari, uh, they've got AMC Theaters, uh, Sony Funimation, and famous films like uh, Princess Bride and Saw. Uh, good contrast there. Uh, famous entertainers. One of my favorite, I'd say, is Weezer. One of my favorite bands growing up. And uh, William Shatner. And I like might William have heard Shatner, of yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he's in some... So I don't know, like space thing. Something I don't like know what that. it is. <laughs> Never really took off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Brian, you mentioned gaming, and they do have a lot of games on Wax blockchain, such as Farmer's World, Aliens World, and uh, Metal War, uh, which I've got to say Aliens War is probably my favorite. They've got to go check that out. I'll put a link in the description. They have a cool, funky, like, little video explaining, like, the world it is um, and how you have to, like, save these people from... Um, kidnapping and stuff like that these little alien dif diplomats it's very oh, cool. cool i gotta say i've seen people who like the farmer's world too so. oh okay yeah, yeah, right on same. well loser no i'm just kidding <laughs> 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 yeah i can see a lot of real world value um to be being able to sell your loot and skins um to others and here's an example so we've been playing uh, so you've been playing your favorite battle game for years and you have a treasure trove of skins and other in-game uh unlocks you know let's say you uh, complete a Guns couple of, and things like that. Yeah, weapons, exactly. and these yeah. could be like you know ones you purchase and ones you like complete a level and you earn. You know, so or maybe you get them from somebody you've killed. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. that that could be another aspect in the game. But when you grow tired of the game, you know, as we all do, the new you know a new version comes out, then then your virtual war, uh, wardrobe is essentially worthless. I mean, it's just you know all that money was wasted. But with wax, you can have a marketplace where you can sell sell it to others that maybe still be into that game. And it's easy to download, just to say, the easy to download the Wax Cloud Wallet, um, and you can integrate with, um, uh, you know, your Facebook account, for example, so you can um, log in easily, which is, you know, nice. Maybe others don't like that aspect, but I think it does enable you yeah, to Yeah, you log looked in into the wallet, and you thought it was pretty, pretty, pretty well done. Right? Oh, yeah, uh, especially from a user side aspect. Like, it's really easy to log in, connect up, you know, as other wallets, you know, say if I gave, you know, a, a newbie person my ledger wallet to try to log into, the, it's going to be a steep learning curve, whereas this is just bam, bam, you're in. Oh. And I don't know, I just quickly wanted to vent too. Like, I, I've played Fortnite before, and as we know, that's kind of a freemium uh, model, whereas you can just download the game for free, and it's all about in-app purchases. Well, I get a skin. I actually, I hate to admit it, but I did buy this cool, like, Batman skin. <laughs> you know, you have a little, like, floppy cape, and you're jumping around, but... I know that was an absolute waste of money because I'll never see a return on that. It's gone. It's in the game. I don't even play Fortnite anymore. I played it for like a week and bought a Batman skin. And But under Wax, you know, I could, if that was integrated with Fortnite, I could sell it back and you know, maybe even make money off that that's investment. Just, uh, to me, that's just obviously the future. I mean, you know, yeah. such, such an ad advancement from the current state where, you know, the... the whoever owns the game you're playing get, gets all the money and, and then gets the assets. And, you know, it just clearly is an upgrade and is going to going to be the way it goes. Yeah. It's kind of like uh GameStop state GameStop's phrase or saying whatever it is, power to the players, except you know, this really is <laughs> <real>. truthfully <laughs> that instead of, you know, you go and turn in your game and it's worth 25 cents. Yeah, exactly. But anyway, I digress on that one. <laughs> Um, and oh yeah, so I also want to mention that you can mint your own NFTs on Wax, and there are tools for DApp developers and marketplace creators to create a marketplace, kind of like your own, as we were talking before, like your own eBay store, or your own Amazon store within the Wax uh, 
uh, environment. But yeah. yeah, the Wax Hive, Wax Developer Hive offers full documentation, as I mentioned before, quick starts, code examples, um, all sorts of stuff like uh, test environments, so you can spin up real quick and test your, you know code and dApps on there. So it's always really a good stuff. idea to help out your developers if you want to develop a blockchain because yeah. the, the applications are everything. If you want more dApps, make it easy for developers right. to get on, test, work with it. There All right. you go. Well, let me talk about the tokenomics as I usually do. The, the to tokenomics man. <laughs> the token here is called WAXP. I don't know. It's W-A-X-P. Um, note that there's also an Ethereum bridge that we're not going to get into, but so there's an ERC-20 token called wax e but the main one and there's a governance token called wax g but the real investment <laughs> token yeah. is uh, is wax p wax p so wax p can be used for staking and voting and you mentioned that it's consistent consensus mechanism is distributed proof of stake so you know with proof of stake you you always have staking you have voting and that's the same with the wax p uh, when it's staked of course it increases the scarcity of the token or at least those that are publicly available and so, and it also uh, accrues rewards over time, sort of standard um, proof of stake type stuff. Um, staked uh, WaxP gives you the right to vote for block producers and earn staking rewards. You talked about the block producers. Um, of course, WaxP is also used in the, uh, in the commerce. So you use it on chain to purchase the NFTs, the skins, things like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there's a total supply of 3.8 billion WaxP and a circulating supply of around 1.9 billion. So that's about right at half. Um, so it's going to be uh, in inflationary, and I'll mention that in a minute. There is a, uh, so there's, you know, like I say, half of it's out there, so there's still a lot of potential mm -hmm. for inflation or dilution, but, you know, you got to have that with a proof of stake, right? they gotta, they got to pay the staking rewards. Yeah. So I want to tell you, the white paper says that there's a, a total, a 5% total annual inflation. But that doesn't include some burning for marketplace commissions, which would be deflationary. So it sounds they're saying it's up to a maximum, but probably less of five percent inflation. So kind of like a yin and yang and a wax or in this case would be a waxing or a hair girthing. A waxing is that wax on, wax off. Yeah. Well, wax on, wax off. <laughs> so its market cap is around five hundred million, which as of the date of this podcast puts it around number forty, hundred and forty on the market cap rankings yeah I'd, I'd say it's kind of it seems to be consistently outside the top 100 for oh, yeah. what i've been looking at yeah, so far um so yeah i'll get into where you can buy it and then i'll quickly mention the team before we get in final thoughts but uh you know the wx waxp it's on uh that token is on binance kucoin gate.io and huobi global so um not terribly difficult to get a, your hands on it um, but yeah, I'll, I'll get into the team. So Wax was co-founded by William Quigley and Jonathan Yantis. And as you said, these guys previously co-founded OP Skins, um, which, well, I'll get into that to a second. I'll yeah. get into OP Skins in a second. But yeah, William Quigley previously worked at Disney, then got an MBA at Harvard and became a venture capitalist. So um, seems like a pretty smart guy. Yeah. But the both he and uh, Yantis had the experience at OP Skins before founding Wax. So, you know, they understand the gaming business, but yeah, the OP skins, you know, they have a link to their website on the, their white paper. And if you try to go there, it's, <laughs> it's gone. It's um, gone. It's shut down. And yeah, yeah. We, we saw a white or a, not a white paper, but we saw a headline before this about some scandal. Um, maybe, you know, a little scandal. more about it, Brian. I, but. I just, yeah, it was shut down because of, um, you know, maybe some, you know, to prevent illegal gambling or something like that. But, you know, I thought, okay, these guys founded OP Skins. Let me go check out OP Skins. And there's no checking it, it out. It is non-existent. So I don't <laughs> yeah. know if they, if these guys, Quigley and Yantis, were still involved with it at the time it was closed down. That that I don't know. But Yeah, that seems to be unclear you know, for sure. Yeah. Worthy of mentioning that sort of their, their big background project is no longer in existence, but... Uh, but you know whether that has anything to do with uh, yeah the new wax, wax I, yeah. I don't know yeah. yeah yeah but something important to note for sure it is all right Ross time for final thoughts now it is <laughs> <laughs> all right who's up this week uh, I think it's you Brian why don't all right, you, you want kick me it to off? run with it yeah. I will so I think wax is in a great niche area right and they've been around for a while and and like I said I've heard of wax I knew of wax before mm -hmm. before we 
did the deep dive into this project and I knew it was in gaming and NFTs and, and you know, wow, what a spot to be in now, right? I mean, that's clearly the hot spot. Um, so I, I think it's in a great market niche. Um, you know, read the white paper. I think it has some, some great ideas. And, and like I said, uh, you know, obviously I think the, uh, the virtual NFTs are, are outstanding. Yeah, it's a very cool it, idea. Here, yeah. Here's the thing. That they don't, they're not out yet. The virtual NFTs are, you know, on the roadmap. Um, and then the other thing, like, like I said earlier, I, I kind of, th- you know, at first I thought this was a gaming platform, but then after reading it, oh, this is more of an e-commerce uh, platform focusing on gaming. But then you and I looked and we tried to find the sort of the, let's go to the wax marketplace. Let's see what uh-huh. they got on there. And it's not out yet, I don't think. And you can... Put something yeah, there I'll behind us. Yeah, I'll put that us behind us if you're on YouTube. That yeah. looks like it's still sort of in development. And, we, and you and I were both kind of like, what? <laughs> yeah. It started it, in 2017. OpenSea's been going for how long? And, and you don't have sort of your main thing yet? Yeah. So I don't know. And, and I'm just going to say, I don't know why that is. It just seems odd to me. Maybe if if you know and there's a good explanation, put it in the comments below. And we'll, you know, we'll certainly uh, take that into account. But... Um, to me, that's a little bit of a, I don't want to say a red flag, but it's a reason that it looks to me like, well, they're not really there yet. So for now, I'm going to hold off on investing in it. Mm-hmm. It's, it seems to be a good potential because it seems to be a good project with, with good people and a great niche market, but maybe it's just not there yet. That's what I'm looking at. No, that that's a, so is that, that's your final thoughts, Brian? That's that, your, that's it. okay, run out. <laughs> well, but yeah, I, I, I will say just to piggyback off you on the the niche market like this is a I think gaming and crypto just go hand in hand the benefits are easy I think the learning curve for gamers getting into crypto um, or I shouldn't say learning curve but gamers under would understand this quickly and easily and I agree. especially on you know games that they can earn you know tokens back is awesome so I think yes. the target market's good and kind of in contrast you know we reviewed Ocean Protocol, which we love the project, the team, but you know that market of big data in crypto is kind of you know up in the air. But yeah. crypto same, gaming, same with AI excellent. in a sense. We're, I think yeah. we both said on the AI projects, great, but is it now or is it a little bit later? Exactly. Yeah. So this is yeah, well said. This is a now project, um, but yeah, it's it, it is up in the air. Especially you're gonna say you know this whack this wax marketplace and say you're the king in NFTs, which I'm not saying they're not, but get that marketplace up yeah. up and running. We want to see it. And, you know, just from, you know, a curiosity standpoint, I want to see what the marketplace is going to shape out and right. look like. So, And, and they um, have, I mean, and sort of, I guess, to be fair, they, they have some links from their website and their white paper to partners or maybe some affiliated, you know, we went to a couple yeah. of those to check out the products. And there is a marketplace going there, but... Um, to me, those seem kind of minor, and Wax, you know, I think wants to be the open sea of gaming NFTs, which, uh-huh. wow, that is a fantastic oh, it's in, be in large niche, but they're not there yet. And so what's to stop someone else from, you know, filling that niche before them? I mean, it's, a, it's something to think about. Yeah, and I, I think, I don't want to speak for you, but I w- I'll say full disclosure, we don't own any, right? Don't I don't, any? I do Yeah, not. I don't own any, but if that marketplace comes active, yes. I am very, I mean, I'm... Like my finger is on the clicker, ready to buy some. Yeah, hundred so percent. I'm ready to go. Let me make that clear too: is that I'm not slamming this project in any way. Yeah, I'm just saying, and I'm saying I would be here saying, oh, I'm going to buy some, or I have bought some if it had had the marketplace. But it seems to me that it doesn't, and I don't understand that. So yeah, um, it, you know, when they do, and we check that out, and we're like, oh yeah, this is a great marketplace, then I might buy some of the wax P. Maybe it'll be too late by then. Maybe that now is the time to get in before it has a run up. But um, and to me, it just seems the big part of their focus is not there yet. Yeah, I like it. And I guess I'll say side note too. I see a good, um, you know, crypto and gaming could be a catalyst for some major market moving. You know, as we've seen with Crypto Kitties, yeah. uh, if you want to call that gaming. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, a huge I mean, driver of. Uh, like you said, crypto and gaming, and then NFTs being part of that is just oh, yeah. a great fit. So big opportunity here for, for Wax, and you know, hope they are able to take advantage of it. Right on. Like All it. right. Thanks everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another uh, podcast from the Crypto Masters. 
Tune in to us next time. And as you can see from the banner below, we've got our social media stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, but if you're on the podcast, we'll leave it, the link in the description. Follow us on all your social you like. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Check out thecryptomasters.com for all your crypto prices and tools. Thecryptomasters.com. Thanks, everybody.